Hi guys, Chris with Microsoft. We're going to be starting the next episode of What's New in Windows Server 2012, continuing our series on using Server Manager. So in the last couple of episodes, we talked about just using Server Manager to set up a local server, then we moved on to uh, moving over to doing remote server management. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do multiple server management. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. Uh, just as before, we're right-clicking and adding servers. We're going to come in here and exclude that server because we're not actually Contoso Cloud is not a server, it's a desktop. So I just did a quick find and just pulled all the stuff from Active Directory in there. And again, keeping an eye on the left side here, you'll notice that we're going to see some server pools get automatically created, like Active Directory Domain Services, DNS gets created, if there were any Hyper-V servers, they just also get uh, created. So if you're, if you're thinking of using this for managing a whole lot of servers, you may want to look at some options here, like the server manager properties. We don't recommend managing more than about 100 servers with server manager or anything more than that. You really want to look at something like system center operations manager. But this is really, I want you to kind of think about this as your own personal server management solution. You can certainly have system center up and your environment managing your systems for you. But you, let's say that your role, you are an active directory administrator or you're the Hyper-V person or you take care of all of the uh, DHCP servers in your organization and so you've got a certain handful of servers that you care about this is where you would add these in you want to add these in so that you can manage them and this isn't state saved in active directory anywhere your personal preferences are only saved in your profile on your local machine uh, but since this is going out and actually affecting your box by touching all of these servers, pulling in event data, and pulling in uh, performance data, pulling in best practices and configuration of what roles and features are, are saved on here, you may want to change the polling interval uh, of how often it's going to go out and pull new information. So we've, we've added in some servers, and by the way, in the last episode, my, uh, my video did not did not look all that great, so I'm trying a smaller screen resolution. And I don't have my current microphone. I'm actually out on the road at the moment, uh, so I'm, I'm using a, uh, a Bluetooth mic, so I don't have my, my good one. I, I do travel pretty frequently, so I don't always have all my cool stuff with me. So I click on all servers, and as before, we see online performance counters not started. So shift, click, Again, shift click. I can right click and just go ahead and kick off the uh, start performance counters. We can also, in a group, kick off best practice analyzer by starting the BPA scan. And just as a refresher from the last time we did this, it's going to run best practices relevant to the role on the servers that, that it finds. So for my domain controller, it's going to run best practice analyzer for the domain controllers. If I were to take Contoso DC2 and make it a DC, which I haven't yet, and we will do that in another episode, um, when I do that, it's going to notice that it doesn't have BPA results for that role. And it'll go back to online, can't get BPA results, and I'll want to run those again. Um, so they're only relevant to the roles in which uh, are installed in the system. So those are off, those are kicked off, and, and they're running now. So we, we, uh, we have a whole battery of tools because the remote server administration tools are installed on this. Talked a little bit about that in the last episode. But when I right click a server, I'm going to see roles that are just relevant to it. So if I were to right click on Contoso DC2, for instance, then I would see a certain series of tools that are different than if I right click on Contoso DC1. This is an Active Directory domain controller, therefore I'm seeing tools that are relevant to Active Directory. So now, from my Windows 8 machine, opening up Active Directory users and computers on that machine. So there we are. Okay, so just clicking on Active Directory Domain Services, now I have the server pool for, uh, for Contoso DC1. And 
if I have a whole heck of a lot of servers in like Oklahoma City and I need to manage those and I'd like to see them all split up, I can actually create a server group. We could call this Chris's servers. And then I could add maybe a couple of the servers that are in that group. Now I have a server group called Chris's servers. Where this becomes really important is when we look at the dashboard view. So if I come up at the dashboard and hide this getting started page, now what I have is a heads up display of all the servers that I manage. So all of these different servers are lighting up various issues. For instance, if I had an event that was relevant to Active Directory, it would light this up in red, sort of like Chris's servers is right now. If I had a service that was stopped, then it was relevant to Active Directory, or DNS over here, it would light that up as red, sort of like it's done with Chris's servers here. I can see shell hardware detector is not, detection is not running on MS2. I can immediately remediate this without having to log into that server by right-clicking and saying start. And after the next poll interval, which was 10 minutes as you'll remember, that should turn around and it should catch up that, uh, that, that issue. And because I have my own server group, that's also showing up in the dashboard with its own thumbnail. To give you, oop, yep, there it goes, they just, they just lit up. So I've got a BPA issue. Okay, so some interesting things about just for instance Active Directory. If we're talking about events that are relevant to AD, we're talking about stuff from the uh, Active Directory Domain Services uh, event channel, the Active Directory Web Services. Uh, we're, we're going to see the uh, DFS, we're going to see FRS, we're going to see uh, the uh, Directory Services, uh, NTDS, ISAM channel, we're going to see uh, the, the DNS stuff pop in here as well, since DNS is relevant, uh, very relevant to Active Directory. The services monitoring, that is also monitoring uh, things that are very specific to Active Directory. Uh, those are going to be just for instance, and every one of your commodities is going to be different. So Hyper-V is going to monitor a different set of services, but for just specifically Active Directory as an example, it's monitoring the Active Directory Domain Services service, the Active Directory Web Services service, DFS, uh, in DFSR, uh, DLT, DNS, uh, the fire replication, FRS, uh, intersite messaging, Kerberos, net log on the server, and workstation services, Windows time. All of those are, are being looked at. And if one of them fails, then ADDS lights up in red, as you see here. And so some, some fairly common questions at this point, now that you see that this is actually going out gathering event data looking for... Uh, service status, looking for BPA uh, results. Very commonly, people like to know, well, what is it? What is it using for that? Well, it's WinRM4. Uh, it's also server manager is pretty hefty. It's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's also using things like uh, Windows Presentation Foundation. It's using .NET 4. Uh, it's using Windows PowerShell. It's it's pulling uh, WMI SIM and DCOM data. So uh, quite a quite a quite a busy little guy. Another really, another really common question that I get is, you know, what can I run this on? Well, as you can see, you can run it on Windows 8. That's that's fairly obvious, and it's built into Windows Server. Uh, Windows 8, obviously part of the RSAT tools. Uh, Windows Server uh, 2012 has this version of the Server Manager built into it. Uh, you can run this on Windows 8 uh, Enterprise or Professional. You can run it on 32-bit or the 64-bit versions. It will not run on Windows RT, however. Uh, the, the way I've personally worked around that is by taking uh, Server Manager and actually installing that on a, a server, configuring it the way I want it, and then uh, publishing it through RDS as a remote app. So. Now I can run it on anything, including my phone. So I'm going to jump back over here to all servers, talk about a couple of other things we can do with the servers. Right-clicking them, uh, we, we saw that we have component-specific tools. For instance, if I need to jump to ADSI Edit, it's just going to pull that up. If I need to 
go, as you saw before, uh, Active Directory uses computers. It just you know, it's a remote server administration tool, so it's going to run that against that server. So other things I can do, let's say we wanted to take Contoso MS2 and restart it. We just pop that in there and say go. He's going to go from online to not online, and uh, he'll go back to online after it finishes replay. That way I don't have to just sit there with a streaming uh, watching for that. Uh, I showed in the previous episode how we can launch uh, Windows PowerShell. Another thing that we can do is do a remote desktop connection directly to that server. So that's a pretty handy way of uh, just having a list of all the servers that you manage pretty frequently. So lots of neat little uh, tools that are built into this interface. Um, and so another question pops up at this point. What, what all can you put into this all servers group? So obviously we can put Windows Server 2012 boxes in here, but um, you actually can put Windows Server 2008 R2 and get almost completely the same experience with those uh, types of machines. It does require a WinRM uh, 4 and a hotfix. Uh, the hotfix may not continuously be uh, necessary for this. Right now it's hotfix number 2682011. That's 2682011 uh, in order for you to be able to uh, fully manage an 08 R2. 2008 will be less robust, but it is manageable. And you can put 2003 and 2003 R2s into this uh, screen, but all you're going to get is heartbeat information. You're not going to get anything uh, magical on that. So, 2000 not supported. So, anyway, that is Server Manager from three major perspectives. You've got your initial configuration, and that was the first in this series. Uh, managing a remote server, managing multiple remote servers. You're going to see Server Manager come up several different times in uh, the remainder of this uh, uh, this is a set of uh, episodes on what's new in Windows Server 2012. Uh, the next time you'll see it, you're probably going to see us installing roles and features remotely. Uh, that's actually coming up in an episode that I'll film here pretty soon. And, uh, so you're going to see quite a bit of functionality surrounding Server Manager, but I definitely wanted to have a quick series that was just about what is this thing, what does it do, since we've been in a habit for so long of just kind of closing this thing when it, when it pops up. Um, so anyway, this has been the uh, third in, in our little series here about Server Manager, and uh, really appreciate you guys listening in. We'll catch you in the next episode. As always, if this was helpful to you in, in any way, please give it a like, and I uh, apologize again. I know the audio wasn't really tremendously great on this uh, this episode. I'll strive to do a little bit better on that in the future. If you'd like to visit my blog, it's uh, very easy to remember. It's the last number and the last letter. It's 9, the number 9, and uh, Z. So 9z.com. Uh, there's links to my Twitter, and my Facebook, and my LinkedIn stuff, and this YouTube channel's in there. Uh, again, as always, I appreciate you guys giving me a listen. This has been Chris with Microsoft, and I'll see you in the next episode.